SMT Nation, we are back. This is take two of this video. The first one, the audio was completely messed up. My cell phone, my smartphone, which has a T-Mobile SIM in it, actually caused interference with my audio interface, and it like ruined the audio part of the file. So we're doing it over again. Anyways, <laughs> SMT Nation, we back again. All right, we're going to be talking about Dish, Boost Mobile, Echo Star, and why they haven't built CBRS. We now have some insights on it. They spilled the beans. They told us everything. All right. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and cite the uh, the article for you guys. It'll be linked in the description on Dish's initial testing of higher powered CBRS. That's kind of the direction of where we're going with today's video. So that'll be down there. You guys can check out that link if you want to see some of those details. All right. So Dish, why haven't they built CBRS? Band 48, N48. Why haven't they done it? Well, um, they're the number two cbrs license holder in the country in the united states so that's a really good question as to why they're not building it they spent over a billion dollars on the spectrum licenses at the auction for these licenses 3.5 gigahertz is a very interesting frequency uh in terms of its band position sandwiched in between the 3.45 which is the dod as they call it and then the c band which is the 3.7 so it's got this really interesting setup. The rules for this spectrum are really all about being shared. Uh, the first level, which is Naval, you know, Department of Defense stuff, right? That means that this frequency can be completely powered down. Radios that are broadcasting it can be completely powered down in the instance where the United States military needs to use it. So there's that. That's where the priority is. The PALs or the licenses kind of is like tier two for usage. And uh, then you have the unlicensed use, right? And carriers build to it, like Verizon especially. They use licensed and they use unlicensed. Uh, Charter Spectrum, uh, Comcast Xfinity, they hold licenses too. And then you have fixed wireless access builders that you know deploy this unlicensed, and so do the carriers too, right? So just kind of puts all that into perspective. Anyways, band 48 and 48 is marred with these power limitations. It's smothered with these restrictions. Uh, can be used for uplink. It is not used for calling. It's basically a supplemental downlink, and it's got all those different rules in it. But there is a way that it becomes better, and that's if the power levels get turned up, and some of the rules around the frequencies, you know, starts to change. And I think that's kind of what Dish and Boost and Echo Star is holding out for. They're looking to see if that is a possibility and will it happen, right? So. You think about an 80 megahertz combined, you know, contiguous swath of spectrum for Dish makes it really valuable from a monetary standpoint. It makes it a more high powered solution as a capacity layer for their network or anybody else who decides possibly to purchase it. If Dish decides they want to sell it. So they're playing the waiting game. They're waiting for rules changes. Potentially, I want to make sure I throw that in there. Potentially coming to three gigahertz and CBRS and, um, you know, those rule changes can only be helpful from here on out, right? It's not going to make things worse. They can only make them better with the exception of possibly some additional interference like the noise floor uh, complications that'll probably come with turning power levels up, right? And, you know, we'll see what this open comment period means. It's going to run through December. The FCC is, is, is taking those open comments. But at the very least, like I was saying, this results in a more powerful... Uh, more substantial, more effective, far-reaching, you know, capacity solution that DISH can then deploy right before they start mounting thousands of radios, knowing what it can and can't do. And I think just the fact that it brings value to the band as well makes those, spe uh, those spectrum licenses much more valuable, right, in the resale market as well. Um, but there's definitely that risk of interference. All those things are definitely possible. And then you have AT&T, They've been advocating and politicking their way to try to get the whole 3 gigahertz rebanded, you know, from 3.1 gigahertz all the way to the end of C-band at 3.9 and N77. Anyways, um, that's kind of where we are. Uh, that's the best answer we have right now. That's from Dish. Monica Alvin had the article recently about it, discussing it. They're holding out. Uh, you know, we've seen a lot of folks down on CBRS. Helium Mobile, for example, they're... They're going to withdraw their interest in CBRS. They're moving towards a Wi-Fi standard, right? So that's that's a thing. Uh, Charter Spectrum, Comcast, Xfinity have not really built to their licenses at all. 
nothing substantial yet verizon has so they're really the exception to the rule they're the only carrier building this to scale in like their top 100 markets you'll see it it's on small cells in CRAN. it's on macro cells it's been meaningful for them but for the most part you know it's 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 less than ideal fixed wireless access providers they've started to invest in cbrs gear and they've liked it a lot you know actually um but it, it's been a mixed bag to say the least we'll see what happens i think the most likely outcome is power levels get turned up i don't think the three gigahertz band gets completely rebanded it's messy it's complicated there have been a lot of auctions with a lot of money how do you compensate these parties for that how do you arrange that you know that's that's the lesser likely outcome but power levels get turned up is very possible obviously that creates a different slew of issues but much more manageable than a rebrand or a reband uh, per se so we'll see what happens but once we get rules changes if we get rules changes you might see dish building this or you might see dish selling it they need capital they're going to go bankrupt anyways what do you guys think is the likely outcome rebanding of three gigahertz or cbrs power getting turned up or nothing you know what of what do you think of those three outcomes and then uh how does this help dish how does it help the industry i think it does you know with power levels getting turned up making the connection more meaningful making it more valuable for dish that helps verizon too right they've built to C cbrs as well but it would be very interesting we'll continue we'll have followed up videos on this as we get these developments but something tells me in 2025 we will have answers to all these questions probably as early as q1 of next year i don't think that's hyperbole i think that's really a possibility the fcc chair that's coming in is the type of person that gets stuff done not trying to throw shade at anybody in the past who's been at the fcc just saying that we need things to change and i think it's going to happen we'll see anyways tell me what you think about all this drop me some comments you're the voice of the people the smt nation let your voice be heard